Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Joe Allen and I'm back with another one of my import tutorial videos. Similar to how I import my photos, this video is gonna be specifically on how I import and ingest my video footage from various different cameras and how I organize it for an efficient workflow. Hopefully there's gonna be some tips in here that you guys will enjoy and you will use in your own projects. Likewise, if there's anything that you use that I haven't actually done myself, then let me know in the comments. I'm interested to know how I can speed up the workflow. Efficiency is the key to great success on so many things. Um, right, so let's jump straight onto my Mac and uh, run through that import process. Okay, so over onto my Mac, I've plugged in my SD card, which is uh, a 128 gigabyte from Lexar, by the way. Uh, this is the one from my Sony a7R II. Now, if we open up Finder, now if you saw my import process for my photo workflow, uh, you'll know that I love being efficient and setting up presets and templates and things uh, just to make it a little bit faster and more consistent when uh, doing these types of repetitive workflows. From the get-go, you'll see on my external hard drive here, this is where we're going to be importing the footage. This is my G Drive EV4, and I have two root folders here. So we have filmmaking and media library. Media library, as you would have seen in my previous video, is about photography. The filmmaking uh, is about video. Um, now, they are, I guess, legacy names that I did when I first started this process. Um, I probably wouldn't name it like that again, because generally speaking, everything is media. But I'm not going to change it now because that will update and upset all of my linked files in various Premiere projects and everything. So I've sort of got to leave it like that. Anyway, within my filmmaking folder, uh, you will see I've got various different um, folders of assets and all sorts of things already. Uh, these just stay in the root of that. So I have all my assets for um, lower thirds, titles and everything. I've got audio, sound effects, um, some LUTs, uh, some music that I've licensed various different plugins. In fact, there's only one in there. And then the projects that I'm currently working on are ranged by year. On this particular hard drive, I just have footage from Japan currently. Um, I've archived the rest of my footage from other travels uh, onto other hard drives. And uh, if we have a look into here, you'll see that it's labeled as 10 Japan. Uh, the reason it's 10 is because this is the 10th country from various others. I can't actually remember where the other bits come from, but it, it made sense before I archived the other footage. Anyway, so within here, this is what I would class as like my main, um, I guess, project directory. And I would have my source video, audio, various photos related to just the video, the exports, uh, any scripts that I've got, um, anything else. And then I have the Japan project files from Premiere. Uh, now these just stay in this root folder um, for Japan and uh, they are relative to anything that's in source video. The reason that it goes in here rather than within its own folder is because if ever you move or rename anything from here, Premiere knows where to look from this folder onwards. Uh, it doesn't matter what happens beforehand, uh, so I believe. Although that does have me questioning why I've not renamed that. Anyway, never mind. <laughs> so this is how it looks at the end, but let's go back to the very start and uh, see what would happen if I was to start importing to a new project. So I take my template here and within this template, I have my template of Premiere. Um, anything that is archived would go up to here. So any old Premiere projects would go into the archive. I have my source video source audio and all my other folder structure is there ready to go. Now essentially all I need to do is duplicate this folder. Um, so that would be command D and uh, duplicate that. Then I will just rename it. So I would then call this one like that. So I'm now back in the UK and if we have a look in this folder I've now got all of my other um, folders or directories ready to go to uh, start importing footage. So source video is where I'm gonna put the raw video footage unedited uh, straight from my cameras. And again, I have a template folder here. Now in this template folder, I've just got all the cameras listed that I currently use for um, getting video. And uh, I just duplicate this directory again and rename that. Now I rename everything to reverse date. Now this depends on when the footage was captured. Uh, so I actually can't remember what the 
first load is. So I'm just going to do that for now. And now it's time to import the footage. So if we open a new tab, go to our SD card. Uh, Sony footage is held within the private uh, directory, M4 root clip. These are all of the clips that I would be using. Now I have actually imported some of this before and uh, I've just not formatted my memory card. Okay, so I'm just gonna select a selection of these files. So from here to here, just for the purpose of this demonstration, I've only done a few of those. Generally speaking, um, I would do the whole folder. So I would then drag these, go back to my initial tab and I will drop them into here. So I'm not gonna drop them into the specific camera just yet. And the reason I do that is because these files are gonna be from varying dates. And uh, I only have these set up per date. So as these are importing, and uh, this comes from the SD card straight to the hard drive, I can then start to move them into the date format. And because it's already on the hard drive, it's gonna be a lot quicker to move it into the relevant dates rather than copying individually into the dated folders uh, where you have to wait for it to finish copying. And that generally creates a bit of a brain lag because once things are copied over, you've forgotten what it was you were doing. It takes a little bit of time to catch up with yourself. And um, it's just a bit inefficient to do repetitive processes uh, multiple times. You should do everything that's the same at once and then catch up afterwards. If any of that made sense, um, it made sense to me, not sure about you. Uh, okay, so I've got these files in here and we can see here, this is Friday, 4th of August and uh, go through and we've got all the MP4 files from the camera and then the um, XML files that follow that with all the metadata relative to that video. And I'm still looking through these and finding ones that are for the fourth, generally just going through this and I'm trying to find footage from the next day. So we've got here, this is now on the 14th and uh, this one was on the 4th. So this is my last piece of footage from the 4th. Uh, and that is C0240. So I can select all of those and then I can move them into this folder and place them in the relevant camera directory. Now that they're in there and you'll see that it moved almost immediately because this is on the same hard drive, uh, I can color this green to say that I've imported everything from that day. And I can now rename this. I know that this is on the fourth. And I will also give it an underscore afterwards to say what that day was. So this is summer in the city. Cool. So there we go. That is all the footage from the Sony into there. And uh, I would then go into the next load of footage. Uh, Remember, this is all still from the Sony, and that would then go into the next relevant day. So I would repeat the process, duplicate the template, rename that to 2017, August 14th, and this is our week in video. Select all of those. and place them into the Sony file on here. So it's going a little bit slow just because it's recording everything. Drop those into place, color that green to say that they've all been imported. And if I had any footage from other cameras, I would eject this SD card, plug in the relevant other cameras SD card and repeat the process, copying them into here. Uh, I don't bother to do anything with these folders other than just name them like this. And uh, then when I come to import them into Premiere, I can literally drag that whole folder and into uh, Premiere it goes. And uh, that is generally my import process for my videos. Now let's have a look inside this template here for Premiere itself. Uh, so let's just rename this. I'm gonna call this one Tutorial V1. Uh, I give it a V1 because quite often I need to create separate versions of Premiere and I'll just title them V1, V2. Uh, and so on and so forth. Let's open this up and have a look what's inside this template. Okay, so Premiere is now open and this is how my template looks. Um, and this is also my default workspace when I'm working on my MacBook Pro setup. Um, as you can probably tell, although this is on my 4K display, I've set the resolution to mimic a 1080 display. Um, so generally if I'm editing 4K, I will have much more real estate to actually play around with the panels and everything. So in my project bin, um, I have my 
folder structure already in place. Um, so I have templates for all of my sequences and a space here that I can drop in my source video. So if we went back to Finder, I can literally go with the source video here and I can drag a whole folder that is relevant into Premiere and that will drop it into there and it will maintain all of the folder structure and the internal folder structures for each camera ready for me to start editing and playing with. Okay, so this has now just popped up with a little dialog window to say that all of those XML files couldn't be imported. Uh, that's fine, we just click OK. And if we look in the folder structure with my bins, uh, it's only taken the Sony one because that's the only one that has any footage in. And that footage is now ready to be edited and played with. So before we do anything with that, I have my sequences in templates. So before we take a look in one of those, I would actually duplicate this and name it to whatever the particular vlog was called. Um, so again, this one would be called tutorial V1 and I'll take it out of my templates and there it is. So if we open this sequence, I have all of my regular um, items ready and they're waiting for me. And uh, again, this just makes it very fast and very consistent to start editing and keep everything uh, in check with all the previous videos. So I'm actually going to leave this tutorial here and uh, I will be making another one on how I actually edit my videos and how I grade them uh, in the coming weeks. So stay tuned for that and uh, subscribe to get updates on when those videos will be coming out. And uh, you'll see more within my project um, file structure and everything as you watch me edit some videos. So uh, yeah, that is the general process for how I import my footage and uh, hopefully that's been helpful for you guys. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that quick tutorial on how I import my video footage from multiple cameras. Hopefully there was something in there that you'd learned and uh, found useful. Uh, if you did, make sure you leave a comment down below. And if you want to stay up to date with future videos, then make sure you click subscribe and you'll catch notifications of future tutorials and some of my travel vlogs and other photography and creative stuff. Um, so I look forward to seeing you again soon. And thanks for watching, guys. See you later. Bye bye.